<laughs> this week on In Search of Nagra's Myths and Madman, we follow the killer and his possessed 1978 Newport, simply known as The Beast. We'll meet the people in his life and watch him struggle to achieve his life goal as a serial killer. This week on In Search of Nagra's Myths and Mad Men. This is James, the Angel of Death. James brings life to the beast. Together, the beast and I bring pain to those who wander in the darkness. I'm mechanic. Pretty much sums it up. I've known the killer since uh, 1988, but this is before I took on the persona of the killer. Back then, he just called him Doug. Well, I always thought he was kind of strange, you know, like, I'm no professional. But this guy is lacking some serious people skills. The killer watches nervously as James attempts to determine why the beast won't start. Oh, your battery still holds a charge. I think it's probably your alternator. Gonna have to upgrade to a higher amp. How much would this alternator cost? Uh, I don't even know if you can get one around here, man. You probably have to go online. Oh, it should be easier to get outrageous. That doesn't even solve the problem about why it stalled in the first place. I'm telling you, let's get rid of this thing. Get something more practical. Never! The beast cannot die! The beast is dead right now. James, you must breathe life back into the beast. <laughs> Dude, I think he wants you to give the car mouth to mouth. <laughs> We're losing her! How did you become acquainted with the killer? Well, every Thursday, our mothers would get together for a trivial pursuit. Um, we'd all hang out. Dale and I always had a good time. What do you think of that, killer? What do you think of that, killer? When the killer was around, he refused to take off his mask. So we couldn't go swimming. His uh, sacrificial gown kept getting stuck in the BMX spokes. I mean, this guy is allergic to cut grass. There's not a whole lot that you can do when he's around. So yeah, we just figured, well, eventually he'd just fuck off and we'd keep ball busting him, right? But, uh, you know, stuck around. Took all of our jokes like a pro. Bet she kind of grew on us, actually. His mom was hot. Hi, guys. I'm so nervous. I've never had this many guys at my house before. Can I get you anything? A beer or anything? Uh, we're good. You look great, Rita. Uh, Thank you. Nothing we've ever similar at all. Okay. Uh, we're just going to ask you a couple questions about your son. Just try to answer them as honestly as possible. Keep really casual. It's just, just us in the room, okay? Okay. All and right. I'm ready when you are. <laughs> okay. All right. Perfect. <laughs> How do you feel about your son's life goal of being a serial killer? What? Well, that's kind of why we're here. Oh, you mean because of the mask and the car thing? Oh, that's just a face he's going through. He'll, he, he'll grow out of it, he'll move on to something else. That's what kids do. Does your son have any communication with his estranged father? Um, not really. And uh, I'm not even sure if he's around anymore. And we're better off not finding out if he is anyways. After the interview concluded, I invited Rita back to James's garage in hopes to capture a bonding moment between mother and son. But she had her own agenda. Hey. Goodness, I'm so nerve-wracking. Ah, you did good. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. What was your name? Justin. 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 Yeah. Yeah. If I could go for a few drinks right now. Where's a good place to get a drink around here? I actually have like a full fridge of pretty much everything you could think of. Yeah, beers. Definitely. Condoms? <laughs> <laughs> Did I say <laughs> that? <laughs> 
I meant I meant I meant hard stuff. Well, if you have some hard stuff. <laughs> I totally do her. You know, but I tried once, but the killer totally cock blocked me. <laughs> what a dick. Oh, you got a nice little hole down here, huh? You know, as kids, we always have dreams of what we want to become. And uh, most of us just become victim of the mundane nine to five lifestyle. But not the killer. He wants to see his dreams come through to fruition. It takes an enormous amount of effort to live the lifestyle that he's chosen. Especially when you fail consecutively each and every time. I think the only reason James like works on his car is because he's known him for so long. It kind of feels bad for him, right? Yeah, and besides, no other garage will serve him because he walks in there, right? Looking all like a creepy and shit, you know? And they're like, nope. <laughs> you know. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really feel sorry for him, man. I mean, he chose this. James, would you consider yourself an accomplice? Accomplice to what? His murders. His murders? Listen, I don't know what he told you, but he hasn't hurt anybody. Well, what about the Cook's Mills incident on Pearson Road in 2006? Listen, this is how it went down. What the fuck? What are you doing? You just jerk off to girls here in the middle of fucking nowhere? No, I haven't touched myself at all. Like, I, don't, I don't do that. I mean, I mean I, like, maybe a hole once in a while, but uh, like, Yeah, like, whatever, you fucking little bitch. I'll kill you. Fuck you. Oh, this is very embarrassing. What are you fucking sick? Oh, I'll fucking fight you, you piece of shit. You got a little fucking dick? Yeah, that's what I thought. My, my, my dick's not really that small. <laughs> As it turns out, the driver hit the girl. It's quite the character himself. Apparently, he's some kind of local celebrity. So the police deemed him a reliable witness. And officially, on the record, it was recorded as an accident. Jay's innocent. Jay is innocent. Frickazor is innocent. This world is innocent. Officer, Frickazor. Hey, man. Hey. You want to get in on this? No, I, I can't. I can't do that. No, no. What? Oh, Why not? I, well, the camera crew around. I, I can't do that. I'm, what are you talking I, about, man? The, the sound guy and the camera guy are on their way over here to get in on this sesh. <gasps> Got a light? Well, James continues to repair the beast, I notice something. Strange on the dashboard. What is that? What? Right here on the dash. Oh! <laughs> that is an ancient Sumerian dagger. One of three like it in the world. He paid 15 times what his car is worth for that thing. Ancient Sumerian text claims the dagger to be a vessel for Barbas, the demon of mechanics. If the keeper of the dagger recites the passage from the included book, Barbus can be transferred to the machine in which the dagger lies. The keeper then becomes the puppeteer of the demonically possessed machine. 
But the question is, does it work? Yeah, it works. If you mean by fucking up his air conditioning and doing absolutely nothing else, it works great. That's not recording, right? No, no, it's off. Mom's high. I was dinner once! <laughs> Such an asshole, Dale. You know, I know this guy since I was a kid. He's always been an asshole. Look at him. That shirt. <laughs> look at this. What, what's in that hole? He looks like he got another asshole. Look at, look at this. You know a guy's an asshole when he's got two assholes instead of one asshole. <laughs> it's funny when you say asshole. Yeah, because you're an asshole. Is that recording? You can't record this. No, no, it's not. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> After diagnosing the charging system with no issues, James discovers the real problem was a clogged fuel filter that was blocking the fuel supply from the gas tank. After that quick fix, the beast is ready to roll. Tonight, the lamb will fall. She's been mighty lucky lately, but her luck is about to run out. When the moon hits the sky and the darkness is upon us, the lamb will suffer a fate worse than death. Her soul will be swallowed, vanquished to the very depths of hell in which the beast was forged. It's the asshole again. Asshole! After two weeks in the hospital, the killer was released. He wandered aimlessly around James's property, tormented by his failure and grief-stricken with his loss of the beast. Although his wounds had healed, the emotional scars were much deeper. I've never seen him like this. He's given up. There's nothing left behind that mask. I mean, I always knew this day would come, but I didn't think it'd be this depressing. The killer spent a week moping on the couch, watching reality shows and eating cheesies, until James came up with a plan to boost his morale. It's gonna be good. I'm missing my new episode of Real Housewives of Crystal Lake for this. It'll be worth it, trust me. 
<laughs> Me, Dale, documentary crew. It all felt pretty bad for you when the beast got destroyed. So we all pitched in, got you a little something. What? What is this? This is the new beast. Now, I know it's not like your old car, but it's not the car that matters. It's the driver behind the wheel. You just gotta believe in yourself. Like we believe in you. I don't know what to say. This is the nicest thing anyone has ever done for me. How did you guys pay for this? I know the documentary crew chipped in a little bit. Dale over here, he jumped in the pond and got your Sumerian dagger. Man, we made a killing on eBay with that, by the way. Dale! You did that for me? Yep, went in the pond. Yeah, I got six leeches on me and 13 ticks. <laughs> One of them even burrowed into my second asshole. <laughs> wow, gee whiz, guys. You guys are something else. This is really great, thanks. <laughs> for a test ride? I think I'll wait. Wait for what? Tonight. The gates of hell will open. Pain and suffering will line the bowels of the abyss. As the moon is high, the slaughter will ensue. The beast is hungry for flesh, and it needs to feed on the innocents. There is no escape, no place to run, and no place to hide from the ultimate and pure evil. I did go way fast. Too fast. Yeah. Way too fast. <laughs> this stretch of highway is paved in old brimstone. Some say there's something out there. Some say it's a cursed road. Hey, Paul. Damn, Vegas. Baby Jay was watching his wish. I was going swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. And he just slammed into this business. And she went up in the air and came down like a strawberry popsicle. All of you, Jay's windshield. Baby Jay won't go like this. Some say just count the edges. You know there's gonna 